Good afternoon, all the guests, faculty members, speaker, and dear participants. Assalamu alaikum, and welcome to today's webinar named Focusing on Profession, Passion, and People, organized by ITPULI DUBT Student Branch. Thank you all for finding time and attending today's webinar. Myself, Tarikul Islam Rimon, studying in DUBT at Department of Tripoli, and also even coordinator of IEEE DUBT student branch, and chairperson of IEEE Superconductivity Council DUBT student branch chapter. Passion and profession tend to change the livelihood of a person, while both refer to an act that the majority of a person's life in his lifetime. There is remarkable difference between the two tasks and how their ultimate result is achieved. The difference between passion and profession is that passion denotes emotions, while profession usually refers to a person's occupation. Passion is free of monetary terms, while the profession is mostly weighted in terms of finances. It has been said, follow your passion. It will lead you to your purpose, and eventually it may become your profession. We are all participants. I am welcoming a true believer of spontaneity by passion for which now she is a successful woman in her goal. So let's announce her name. The speaker of today's webinar is Aisha Nazia. She is a project management professional, founder of Start Sense Today, Women in Engineering Lead and Chair, Content Marketing of IT Poly Technology and Engineering Management Society, former competitions executive and venue entertainment manager of Indian Super League, former logistics and transportation coordinator of National Basketball Association, former venue workforce manager and youth program assistant and state coordinator of local organizing committee FIFA Under-17 World Cup India 2017, former facilitator of National Games Kerala 2015, former senior engineer of Indian Oil Adani Gas Private Limited, former Secretary of IEEE Women in Engineering, AG of IEEE Kerala Section. She is a mechanical engineer by education, project and management, sports management professional, operations expert, outreach and growth facilitator by profession, hustler, people's person, football enthusiast, adventure seeker, culture vulture, Wanderlust and believer of spontaneity by passion. She's a happy work, workaholic who exports productivity hacks and loves smart work, basically getting things done in the least time with utmost precision, yet super effectively. And so is her love for striking off her to do list that reduces anxiety about the chaos of life. Puts structure to work, a go to default motivator, and definitely a proof of what one can achieve in a stipulated time. She learns every day while she also makes sure she unlearns what is not necessary. It's a continuous cycle of grasping, ever more concept and exhibiting ever more intricate behaviors that helps her at work as well as in life. Our enthusiasm expands over a swath of cross-functional activities and project management across technology, engineering, sports management, inclusion, sustainability, and youth development. Beyond being able to motivate and supervise team members, manage, per manage performance, and run efficient systems, she has always made sure that her contributions have been strategically formulated for growth. Dear listeners, today we have some of our expected teachers with us here. I am welcoming Professor, Professor Dr. 
Anand Hussain sir and chairman of department of Tripoli. I request him to say something about today's event. Sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for giving me floor. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Actually, it is very good news for us that our students are going to uh, arrange such type of activity which will develop their soft skill. Uh, actually, it is very important. Uh, so uh, I hope you will continue this type of activity more and more to develop your soft skill, actually. Uh, so that is all for my side. Please uh, start. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for delivering such valuable speech. I'm requesting Moinul to present an introduction video of all the chapters of IEEE DVT student branch. Moinul. Is my screen visible? Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Manu. Now, I would like to welcome Aisha Nazia and request her to start her demo demonstration. Uh, thank Here, you. Honorable speaker. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. OK. Um, I will just share my screen. One of you can confirm you can see it. Okay, I hope you can see the screen. Yes, we can see. Yes, it's visible. Thank you. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm sure uh, Tariq has given a lot of information about me to you guys. Uh, but keeping all of that aside, um, I think uh, uh, I will just quickly take you through some of the things that I feel um, is necessary when we get into any kind of profession. 
so you know mostly dealing with uh, how how good an engineer you are along with how good you are when it comes to uh, being passionate about what you work for and also about how do you manage people right because um, even if we go to an engineering college uh, these are not things that becomes part of our curriculum and is that a problem uh, the answer to that would neither be a yes nor a no because everything that we learn in colleges these days comes from a system that is 20 to 30 years old so evolutionary it is going to take time to get better but meanwhile uh, with all the kind of sources that we have around us in terms of internet in terms of um, accessibilities libraries information teachers i think we can prepare ourselves uh, so that by the time we're getting out of college we know that these are the things that i would need once i start working as a professional outside you know in the industry uh, so the reason why I called it Know It All to Learn It All is because um, I wanted to talk about profession. At the same time, I also wanted to focus on passion and people. So sometimes, you know, just knowing this is what I want actually makes so much clarity about learning it. Because if you don't even know what is required, then there's no point asking somebody to get prepped or, you know, get better at doing things. Uh, so, so to start off with, um, I will quickly take you through an uh, activity which I would be super happy if all of you could try after this session, which is I call that as discovering myself kind of an activity. So there's this thing called Ikigai. Uh, if there are ardent, voracious readers in this group, I'm sure you would have read this book. It's a very popular book. So uh, the book is all about a Japanese concept, uh, meaning Ikigai, which which, you know, it can be rephrased as a reason for being. Now, the reason why I consider this an activity is most of the time, be it in school or be it in college or in general in life, right? Even if you're out of college, you're working, you're 10 years old in the industry. Nobody really asks us such questions, right? Like we're always told that we need to go to school. We need to get things done. Once you're into college, you're told to focus on the kind of um, technical aspects of the course that you've taken. Once you're out, you either go into a mainstream career, which is associated to your course, or you, you know, go for an IT job or you go for managerial jobs, whichever comes your way. So often, you know, uh, when people tell us to discover ourselves, see what you like, try to figure out what makes you happy. These questions are easy to be asked, but sometimes I started finding it very, very hard to answer them because I really didn't know, like for the longest time during school, I would have dreamt of becoming 10 things. But, you know, once I'm in college or, you know, once I start my engineering degree, I was like, okay, now that it's engineering, what next? So this all, there's this always uh, what next kind of questions that keeps coming in. So I think the moment I did an Ikigai chart, at least I was aware of, okay, listen, I have some answers. Now, if you look at the chart, you will see that, you know, it shows concentric circles put across and with, you know, subsets of how it overlaps. Uh, you will find this on the internet. So you don't have to worry of not finding it. So when I first started writing things into each of these columns, right, like the ones that you see, what we love, what our passion is, what our mission is, what our vocation is, half of my answers were very same. I'm like, I don't know what my passion is and I don't know what my vocation is. So, you know, it really helped me disintegrate what I really was feeling from within because half of the questions I didn't have answers and whichever I wrote down, if you ask me where it perfectly fitting into what the question was, it wasn't. But at least I had clarity that, okay, this is what I'm good at. I know that I'm good at Microsoft Office or I know that as a profession, I'm a mechanical engineer. I know that I want to be paid every time I do something. So, you know, like it kind of felt or it made sense to what exactly is going through in my thoughts. So ever since I made that, I figured out that, you know, all of us have these things inside us, but we don't really take it out in the form of an activity or, you know, unless somebody forces us to do it, we don't really get out of our usual comfort zone of monotonity, right? Where you know that once you're born, you go to school, once your school is done, you go to college, once your college is done, you uh, go get to work, once you have a stable work, you get married, then you have children. So there's this, you know, very monotonous stability 
generated way of how people present life to us from a very young age. Now, is that social conditioning? It is part of social conditioning. And often that becomes the comfort zone for us. How many of us would have decided, say, uh, during our college days that, okay, I want to drop out and I just want to go do something. Or maybe we finish engineering and then we are like, I don't think engineering is my thing. I must just become a traveler or I must just do uh, a adventure show on TV. So, you know, most of the times we find it very safe and we find it very secure being in the comfort zone. Now, how long do we stay here, right? It just gets difficult because if you are somebody who's really passionate and if you're somebody who's really good with connecting with people, eventually in, your, in our lives, we are we'll get to a position where we learn so much from the people around us and uh, it'll feel so good when we indulge in things that are that we are passionate about so then you will start realizing that your comfort zone isn't really your happy zone you're just there because you don't have another choice i mean that's what most of us think but the whole question is how do you get out of this right like when you are really trying to get outside your comfort zone of doing anything be it studying a subject be it finishing your college be it sitting for placements, be it finding a company to work, uh, making a resume, whatever the action item is, you'll have to come out of that. Now, when you come out of that, there's definitely going to be consequences, right? Because you'll have to figure out how to make a resume or you'll have to go on LinkedIn and figure out, okay, how many people work in my company? In, in my dream company? How do I reach out to them? Uh, what shall I write to them if I'm writing to them on LinkedIn? What What is the document that I'll attach with the writing so that they feel I'm a good candidate they can speak to? So there's so many things that you need to do. Now, instead of actually doing it, if you, you are like a little procrastinating or if you're a little lazy, you'll just feel like Okay, you'll find some excuse to doing it. You'll say, oh, my English is not great. I just can't write a cover letter or I do not have a good portfolio. So, you know, I have nothing to send to a recruiter. So, you know, we can easily find excuses. And especially when we are in that mode, everything people tell around us kind of uh, becomes opinions in our life because they tell you that, oh, don't do that. That's not a, you know, that's a very niche industry. You won't find a lot of jobs there and we just settle for it. So if we are able to get out of that fear zone, then life just gets easier. Because once you have realized that, okay, just keep aside all the excuses. Uh, it's okay, people giving you opinions. Just move into a zone where you are ready to try things. Then, then the whole process becomes easier. So for me, what I felt is uh, moving from comfort zone to fear zone and getting out of the fear zone is what really matters. And that's where more than half of your energy, time and effort is required. Once you get into the learning phase, then you are in a loop because you'll start enjoying how much it matters to read or learn or understand things that is exciting to you. Now, it can be anything. It can be cinematography for somebody. It can be um, using Photoshop for somebody else. It can be working for sport. So, you know, whatever that is, once you're into the learning and the growth zone, it just becomes easy. Now, as I mentioned before, like these are all parts of how, you know, a personal growth journey happens. Like it doesn't happen over a day. It just happens uh, time to time. And it's it's an overall journey of how we grow as a professional. Now, when you pass out of a college, we are merely called as an engineering graduate. But what are we beyond that? We have become a professional ready to be available in the industry to do things that we are capable of. Now, what we are capable of is pretty much in our hands. So, uh, so you know, this whole personal growth journey uh, to me is very important because we are not often touched upon to look into this, right? Like be it at school or in college. And I'm sure Bangladesh is no different from how things happen in India, where I did my schooling in college, that, you know, these are all structured system. We go into a structured system, we're told certain things to do, and then we just keep going doing that. Now, what happens is if we really want to get out of those zones that I was speaking, then that is when exactly personal growth happens. How many of us would have thought this in the first year of our engineering? I didn't. I'm, I would be super happy if any of you would have done, but I'm sure majority of us don't do. So then it becomes very important to understand that, right? Because no matter what you're doing it, the whole journey of the process is going to look like this road which is in, initially it's easy but that's when we get curious we get excited okay i want to learn this thing and then as you keep moving it just gets a little difficult but you know you know that you 
have got the capacity to take that curve and then eventually it just gets harder but by the time you will become an efficient professional if you have taken the beginning and the intermediate phases in the right manner this is exactly like how you play a video game right you play level one which is like the beginner's level it's easy you make it then they give you a tougher level and then by the time you finish the tougher level you have like new skill sets and by the time you reach the ultimate say the power kind of uh, uh, you know level of the game you are equipped with certain skill set to win that game so i think in a way it is important of how we look at the way that we want to navigate our profession right or how we want to navigate our professional life like people ask us about career but career happens once we gain expertise somewhere career doesn't happen the moment you get a job career doesn't happen the moment you take a degree it happens once you are out there starting to work you figure out what what is that you can contribute to and you know that okay this is my expertise now the reason why i want to touch on everyday leadership is because um i just heard even one of your professors saying that soft skills are very important right like um do we have so soft skills by default we do uh, but unless those are like triggered to come into action most of the time we don't use a lot of our soft skills uh, a lot of it could be reluctance a lot of it could be that we're shy we're fearful of judgments or in general we are like okay i don't think i have that thing to become a leader in me right but what is basically leadership there might be like a lot of definitions to it but a leader is somebody who can manage people like when i say manage people it can be professionally emotionally in a community form so for me everyday leadership happens in a form where you know it's something that's just beyond you right you do it for others and yourselves without expecting anything in return or making an excuse so if at all any of you have a free time definitely listen to this ted talk by drew dudley which is about everyday leadership right because he says that every day the things that we do actually contributes a lot to the kind of leader we become right say my mom can tell me today morning that hey listen i need groceries can you buy those for me and then she gives me a list of vegetables fruits and you know other kitchen household things and then me planning on how to do it right like either just take my vehicle and go to a supermarket and get it or you know just order it online whichever way i'm actually solving a problem now how often do we look at these things as solution no we don't we just feel that it's a day to day thing so that's the whole point in a day to day thing we actually uh we actually look at things as a again it's a structured manner but the way i will shop and the way my brother will shop would be very different so it has to do a lot with how we tackle with our everyday things how we manage people in this everyday scenarios it can be anything right it can be even patterns of how we use social media so for me that becomes a part of who we are and our soft skills soft skills are mainly to do with people or people management or time management and these are like one bucket of things that you can just get by consciously practicing an everyday leadership attribute within yourself now the reason why i feel everyday leadership as well as personal growth both that we spoke is very important is because of the whole global mindset that exists between us right like if you look at the world today we might not be learning about 3d printing or ai in our textbooks but the moment we are out of our college the industry that we move into uses all these kind of technology our engineering textbooks don't even have mentions of 2g networks and today we are at the cups of having 5g networking so you know it is important for us to start early you know we we can't get into this whole blame game of okay my college didn't teach me this or my textbook did not have this because you know that the world is evolving at a much faster rates than your textbooks so it's very important that we start early when i say start early instead of thinking which company i want to work for uh at the end of your final year before your final fourth year exams you could you know pretty much start thinking of it in your first year itself now how that will help is that okay at least you know that this is the industry that i want to go eventually in the next 3 years of your college you will figure out which are the subjects that excites you which are the subjects that will help you get into this place which are the things that you focus on we have like 50 odd papers that we write uh and pass for an exam but how many of it are things that really excites us not all of that right just because it's part of the uh academic curriculum we just go through it 
So it's important that we start early. Second is cultivate curiosity, considering that we all have Google today. With the amount of information Google disperses to us, there's high chances of us lacking curiosity. But then, you know, that's again no excuse, right? Like you hear about something. Let's say I'm going to tell you guys that uh, the whole of last week, which is this week, right? Monday and today's Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the whole of last week uh, was when uh, Jupiter, the planet Jupiter came closest to Earth. So if you guys would just go out and look at the sky, just like how we spot Venus and Mars once in a while, we could see Jupiter as one big star out there. But when I tell this, is it exciting for you? Will you go out and look at the sky today clearly defines whether you're curious about it or not. Now, it's not necessary that everybody does that, right? It's not necessary that everybody is curious about space science or everybody is curious about the sky and the stars. But when you hear information that excites you, then cultivating the curiosity to figure that out makes a lot of sense. Now, being intentional, right? Like I said before, even growth has to be very intentional. Like you should be aware that, okay, these are the things I do not have. So let me use my accessibility to internet. Like all of you listening to me today are privileged in a way or not, because you have the access to use internet and listen to me. I'm sitting miles away from where you are, from each of your house. So if you have that privilege, then you truly have all means to be intentional about how you want to grow. And the fourth and final one is to celebrate diversity, right? Like if you look at any workplaces these days, it's not very conventional. It's very diverse. Like there's people from different backgrounds. There's people from different social contexts. There's people of different race, different abilities. There's specially able people. There LGBTQ uh, people in the workspace. You know, there's so much of dynamics that's changing every year, every day, every single minute that we should learn to celebrate diversity, right? Now, what happens in the normal curriculum system is that we often are taught about how we and similar people are. But the moment you go out to work somewhere, you can't just expect everybody to be similar to you. Because at a workplace, people come with different expertise to do different things. Now, my office boy would be very different. My HR would be different. The guy who works with me in the design team would be different. My engineering head would be different. Because in a company, it's not like how we go to college, right? If I go to college, all the students in my class are studying mechanical engineering. If I'm in school, all the students in my class are studying the same textbook but when you go to work or say any kind of project or any kind of thing that evolves an impactful outcome then you actually see people coming with different expertise collaborating and then you know providing solutions in a way so that's also a reason why diversity is important now why all this because the workplace is constantly evolving like i said uh, it, you know, it's changing so fast when compared to our textbooks and things like that. So we being able to adapt to this fast paced changes in the nature of work is very important. Now, when I studied mechanical engineering, my college had manual lathes. I don't know how many of you know what a lathe is. Lathe is used to cut and design metallic uh, objects. Uh, it's all part of our first year workshops. So I've only seen a manual lathe, right? So the moment I joined an oil and gas industry in India, the moment I went to one of my refinery settings, I saw a CNC lathe there. Now, do I know to operate it? No, I do not, because I haven't seen this thing for the, like in my life. I haven't studied about something like this where you don't have to manually use a lever or, uh, you know, things to cut a metallic piece. You just need to like write a program and, and the thing is done. So, you know, can I sit there saying I was not taught this? No, because like I said, like all of you, even I had the privilege, the access to the internet and hence adapting to these fast changes is at our, like it's on us. The responsibility is on us. And another thing is encouraging technology savviness, right? Like you can't say in, in the existing world that I'm not a digital person because everything happens digital. Me talking to you guys is happening digital. You guys putting up your resume on LinkedIn is digital. Having social media to post pictures, write about things. It's all digital. So it's very important to be very tech savvy. Now, OK, what do you want to be tech savvy about is your choice. Like, do I have 400 applications on my mobile phone? No, I don't need to have 400 apps on my mobile phone just because 400 apps out there are good. But I need to have 
apps that will make my life easier or apps that will help me learn things right so it's also important to know things like that like and also when i say digital world it's not just about applications on a mobile phone it's also about knowing excel knowing microsoft word knowing microsoft powerpoint like being good at it nobody like these are not things that you need to go for a course and study you just need to open your laptop or your computer or your desktop and just start learning on it like it's a very easy DIY learning process, right? So knowing that you can't just say walk into a, a place of work and say I do not know Excel or I do not know how to use Google Meet. I do not know how to use Google Calendar. I mean, these have all become like your mere basic qualification that you need to know. And another thing is uh, all the chaos around us, right? Like there's so much happening around us. There's pandemic, there's that, there's this. There'll be elections, there'll be political issues, there'll be a lot of other problems in each of our countries. But being comfortable with all of that's happening around should be like a practice that we intentionally do. When I say comfortable, it's not like chill around with that thing, but be very cautious that, okay, this is all happening around me. But then it's also important for me to focus on myself so that no matter what is happening around, I am prepared to be what I am with the consequences of what is happening around me. And like I said, looking beyond constantly, right? Because the world, the technology, the engineering advancements happening around us are so quick that we'll have to always look beyond. And that has to be constant. We can't just get worn out. And we have to be a continuous learner. Like we have to keep learning something or the other. That's pretty much become a prerequisite. You can't say that, okay, when I was in school, there was Pluto, which was part of the planet system. Today, Pluto is not part of the planet system. So, you know, you, you can't say things like that, but you'll have to continuously learn and update the information in your head. Now, uh, the reason why I want to focus on continual learning, I don't know how many of you would have heard of this. Continual learning is also known as lifelong learning. Now, what is this? All human beings and animals have the ability to continuously acquire, fine tune, transfer knowledge and skills throughout their lifespan. Unless any of you is succumb to a mental health illness, otherwise, all of us, you, me, and the you know, so many billion people in this world and animals have this basic ability that we are born with, which is we have the ability to acquire something, which is if we see something, we know how to do it. Like we acquire the skills to understand that. When I say fine tune, we have the skill set to make it better. The first time I try copying something that you do, it might not come right. But the more and more I try, it just gets fine tuned and better, right? So we have the ability to fine tune it. And also we have the ability to transfer this knowledge and skills. So if I know to do something, I am sitting here and transferring it to you. So this is something that's existing in our system ever since we are born. And the problem is the more and more we don't use this, the worser and worser it gets. Like I'm sure you would have heard a lot of people say that the older you grow, your capacity to learn new languages, your capacity to learn driving, your capacity to learn swimming decreases. You know why? Because the more and more older we get, the more and more focused we get on work, we forget learning. We stop learning. Once we are out of our a structured educational curriculum system, we stop learning. The more we stop learning, the lesser is our neurocognitive systems within our brain able to capture information, right? And that's clearly a reason why this happens. And like I said before, like, you know, this whole, this it's called PLC, which is like personal learning cloud, uh, which involves all these online portals that you have, right? You can use YouTube, you can use Coursera, edX, platforms like that. You can use LinkedIn kind of uh, platforms, which also gives you certificate learning options. So learning has become personalized. Now you can go on the internet and choose what you want to learn. You can choose if you want to do a paid one or a free one. You can choose at what frequency you want to do it. You can choose when you want to do it, what time you want to do it. And you can also meet people by that. Like you, you can meet somebody who sits in say Mexico and is doing the same course with you. So learning is pretty socialized in a global context and learning is very contextualized also. Just because you took this course doesn't mean that you have to learn 10 other courses, right? Because in our education system, it's like that. I want science, but with science, I have all these plus, plus, plus additional things that I want to study, which I have no choice not to opt. So all of these things are making learning much better, but how many of us actually make use of it, right? Like I said, interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills, which is interpersonal skills are soft skills, which is basically being able to talk, having a good skill on the language, being able to manage a team, uh, present things, 
you know all of those are interpersonal skills now what are intrapersonal skills right intrapersonal skills are like my own skill sets like am i confident am i uh, in a place of worth that i feel that okay i can do this how good do i feel on days when i fail you know these are all interpersonal skills like you know feeling happy feeling sad feeling jealous having ego so we'll have to work on those as well and language skills like i said before is very important because uh, it really gauges how you can communicate right so if your language and it necessarily needn't be english always there's always this myth around english right that okay you know english then you're better no it isn't whatever language you know you need to know it well you need to know it in a way that you can express anything that you want in that language at work so say if i'm going to france knowing english there isn't a big deal but knowing french there so that the workspace that i share is easier like in communication is what makes me different right similarly visual skills observational skills logical skills now are these skills that you can write on the resume no these are all skills by default you should have i've seen a lot of resumes in my life um, when i hire people where people write these as their skill sets now you know these are all like basic skill sets if you are mentioning it specifically doesn't make you any better than the rest of the people who apply for the job right so it is very important uh, that we continuously keep learning something or the other it can be a language it can be a skill set just use youtube just use anything that's free of cost to make sure that you learn something new and lifelong learning has been beneficial throughout uh, for most of people's careers like you see the numbers on the right like it says 78% of employers believe lifelong learning factors uh, helps in promotion because they feel that this person is growing intellectually as well right and uh, they believe that lifelong learning also improves the person's job performance because he's getting new information so he'll have new thought process of how to solve a problem so i think even in a growth perspective lifelong learning really helps now this is something that i said before right our current education system was designed in the pre internet era of the industrial age and where are we today we are today in a transitioning third industry revolution to industry 4.0 so we've come so far but our textbooks are still there so it's very important that you don't be the elephant on the right you need to be the elephant sorry you don't be the elephant on the left you need to be the elephant on the right because obviously you're learning you need to get gpas you need to score in your exams but at the same time you have to develop skills that is required to go out in the ecosystem now how do you do this like i keep telling this to everybody right start writing now when i say start writing you don't have to become a blogger or you don't have to become a writer to publish a book you just start writing about whatever it is right start writing about what you're studying start writing about something that you feel start writing about anything at all right say today you listen to this after this just take a pen and paper and write down what all you felt good about this or what you didn't like about this webinar so you know that whole writing thing really helps you to put your thoughts into form right when we speak i'm just um i'm not completely immersed i'm partially immersed because i'm like you know expelling something out of myself but when i write i'm actually thinking and then i'm putting down so there's both input and output happening together now the second thing that i tell people is social media like like all the uh, social media platforms that you see on my screen are things that you know so how good are these right it it clearly depends on how you want to make use of them or you know how do you make use of them i see people use all social media in the same form uh, is that how it is that's not how it is twitter is meant for something linkedin is meant for something facebook is meant for something else instagram is meant for something else so you know use these social media wisely okay it's okay if you don't read newspapers go to facebook or go to twitter or go to linkedin and follow a news channel now that news channel will give you enough information that you might gather reading the newspaper early in the morning so you can always find smart alternatives of doing things but you should be very careful about how you use them right because you you can't just let it to the disposal about anything and everything now like i said we live in a very techno frenzy world right so networking and connections are very important now why is this important because everyone you will ever meet knows something that you don't know and when i say this it can be from the security guard in your college to the person who comes to clean your classrooms to your father to your mother to everybody around us will be knowing something that we don't know now is it engineering no is it technology no but they'll definitely know something that we don't know so all the data that's available on internet with all the networking opportunities that's available on the internet when you combine both of this together which is available in abundance you can actually make a good fortune out of this 
to make yourself accessed and you know better and one thing that i want to focus on is linkedin right now linkedin is pretty much become the professional networking platform you write about things that you focus on you 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 know you find people there like you can connect with people that you thought is far away from your reach say tomorrow i want to uh, talk to the head of sales at say mercedes benz uh, the only way i can write to him is through linkedin right that too without engaging into his privacy because linkedin is a very much like you see their tagline it says connect to opportunity it is meant to connections it is meant for people to do networking it is meant for people to reach out to each other and see how they can help each other either become a mentee or you become a mentor or you look for opportunities or you talk to the right kind of people and see how they got into your dream companies you can do so much with linkedin right now and also uh, you should be able to write things about yourself like you know uh, in one of the companies that i was working uh, they told all the employees to you know write about things like you know write a slide about you so you know uh, you should be able to write what exactly things are right like say work profile is something all of us know i'm just showing this just so that you know that you should know such things about yourself right you should feel good about you they told me you have to put a picture so i took two of the best pictures that i have where i feel so good about you know things in life so similarly you know when they told me to write work profile you know it's pretty much something that's there in my resume i don't have to think about it too much but they told me to write fun facts about myself and also best conversation starters to get my attention now you know i really had to think through okay what are these so then you know i i wrote down things that i felt are fun facts about me now what i think fun facts about me might not be what you feel fun about me right like say reading all these three things i'm not very sure how many of you feel it's even fun you'll be like oh what's so fun about this but you know these are things that's fun for me now uh, conversation starters yes it's very important because if you do not know what is that attracts you to get into a conversation it'll be very difficult for you to network with somebody right your personal brand that is you as a person is uh, how you want other people to perceive you right so it 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 comes with how you make the perception reality like you see me on the screen you would have visions of okay she's like this she's like that but it also depends on what i'm showing you what i'm talking to you what is my thought on certain things so it's very important to develop this uh, perception about oneself both in person as well as in your online presence like on your social media on your linkedin profile like i just type a name and there's so much of information about you on the internet that it gives me a perception of who you are so if you're trying to be uh, somebody that you're not then some day that's going to contradict with who you are in person and also every time you make a choice right make take that 1% of your valuable time to think about the consequence of that choice now if you do that what happens if you don't do that what happens not only what happens to you but what happens to the people around you and post that is when you can you know think about should i really do it or not and it's completely okay to be wrong because sometimes not sometimes i think most times not all of us are right right we sometimes end up doing wrong things and then we figure that out it's wrong i really don't know people who will know that something is wrong and then go do it most of the times we just do it and after doing it we figure it out whether it was right or wrong so you know when you become wrong you just get more clarity now i'll quickly take you through some learnings from my journey uh, when i was doing my engineering or say early from my school days Uh, i've had this habit of not reading when i say not reading i don't read fictional things like harry potter or twilight or any of those things right uh, i don't read fictional novels and things like that i read things on the internet which are more like small articles 10 to 15 minutes read because that's my span of reading now when i say i don't read can i just sit there and just say okay i don't read i don't know things about i don't know what's happening around in the world no i can't so then i substituted my uh, weakness or my laziness in a form that i can complement it right so i started rather listening to things and i started visualizing things now how do i do this i started watching more videos i started watching documentaries so whatever information i want to i started gaining that information through a different source now to tell you how strong your brain is right like you look at this red dot on my screen and the moment like this is also an activity that i do when i i mostly do it on offline uh, but now that it's online i can't take your responses but i'm sure you, you guys can try this out when i show you a red spot on my screen and i tell you that okay look at this red color and tell me what comes into your mind 
you will be shocked that there will be like 10 million things that would have just swept by your head even without you noticing it are all things that are red in color right are all things that you, that you've seen in your life that's how quick or sharp our brains are now how to use them in different scenarios is up to us on how we tame it how we fine tune it and things like that but you know this exercise is just to tell you that the moment i hear red right there's so many things that comes into my head from from the minute of things like say uh, you know i've written my husband's one plus charging cable or you know a city bus in my city is red in color so things like that right so a lot of it passes by our head which clearly shows that that's how good our brain is or we can remember of so many when i tell you think of things that are in red color i'm sure all of you would have had so many memories of things that is in red like your signal lights things that you have seen on the internet flash that this so it's very important to realize how fast your brain is right Some, somebody has to tell us that hey listen your brain is as fast as everybody else's but you need to make the most out of it another thing is sometimes leading ourselves helps us lead others now how do we lead ourselves we have to be organized we have to see how do we put a system to how we function right like how how can we reduce procrastination how can we reduce how lazy we are how can we focus on things the more and more we try to uh, you know evolve ourselves and lead ourselves the better we will learn on how to lead teams and also like i have this problem of ocd right like i can just use that as a medical excuse and sit along but with ocd i imbibe the very organizational skill set to run huge projects that i work at because there's often this um, you know there are two kinds of people you can either be the one on the left or you can either be the one on the right i am pretty much the person on the right but do i judge the person on the left no i do not the person on the left can be the person on the left it's just that if i have additional time i will go help the person on the left to become exactly how my table looks right so it is okay that you know people uh, people are you know in a condition where you don't have to judge them they can have their own sets of how they want to process things it's just that if you have a particular skill set or if you have a condition that helps you be structured you just transfer it to them and another thing is it is important for you to look out for opportunities right when i was in my college i was in second year of my engineering college is when i volunteered Uh, for a conference in india it's called ink it's exactly like ted talks it's called ink talks and uh, i met the founder of this uh, uh, ink talks at one of the conferences ieee conferences that i attended and the whole idea of ink sounded so fascinating to me and i was like how do i associate with you guys is there an opportunity for me to volunteer so they said yeah we take volunteers every year i applied for the volunteership i got the volunteership so in second year of my college i joined ink as a volunteer and this is like i think 6 years later i was one of the speakers at ink now back then did i know that i will speak at an ink conference no i did not know but i know that the journey started because i was curious to know what's happening there not that i had planned that okay i want to be a speaker let me go ask this person how to get into the system no i just wanted to be a volunteer i wanted to go there see how a ted talk happens see how things revolve there but then eventually i grew in that role from volunteer next year i became volunteer head from there i became an intern once i passed out of college i started doing consulting gigs for them so you know you will have some idea of where you want to get to similar example is i'm very much passionate about space and space engineering right so how do i get to space engineering uh, things or how do i get to know about it so i read a lot about ieee and ieee's association with nasa and things like that and i figured out there's a there's a society called mtts it's called microwave theory and techniques society and this society pretty much deals with anything related to space and space engineering so i became a part of that society it's been like what 3 years now uh four years actually and i enjoy being part of that society because i gain so much information about space research and engineering and technology related to outer space which i will not gain if i'm not part of that society now that society gives me access to nasa engineers isro engineers uh, astronauts from russia but how like it's my contribution to that society in the long run that helps me give this opportunity right so i tell people that it's very important to use the maximum of Uh, the opportunity that you get, get now this is also another example of something that i want to bring into your notice uh, i happen to work for the fifa under 17 world cup that happened in india as one of their workforce heads and during that time um, you know we had volunteers from all age groups all 
categories, all kind of skill sets. And these two volunteers you see on the either side of me were people who are good artists. So I just asked them, can you like wall paint the stadiums here? And they just said, okay, yeah, we can do it. They did that. And like say in 10 days time, when somebody flew from the FIFA headquarters to India for a recce, recce as in for the inspection of the stadium, they found it very interesting and they wrote an article on FIFA.com. Now, did I know that an article of mine will come on FIFA.com? No, I did not. My only aim there was I love wall paintings. I have two volunteers with me who are good at it, who enjoy it, who are football enthusiasts as well. So we just used our extra time to paint the walls of the room that we work out of. So then, you know, like in a way, it just motivates you. Like in a way, we just turned our office room into something that we all like or we enjoy it. And that kind of did it get appreciation right away? No. People just came in. They said, oh, wow, the room is nice. It took somebody to come from all the way from Switzerland to uh, for a stadium inspection to notice this and write about this. Right. So uh, most of the times you just do things because you like it or you do it with so much passion and uh, involvement of people that you feel so content by just doing it, whether you get praised or whether you get uh, applauded for it or whether you're recognized for it is a different story. Now, I do. I did two professional choices. I took two professional choices when I was in my college. One is definitely joining IEEE in the first year of my engineering. And the second one was joining IEDC. I don't know if it's uh, existing in Bangladesh, but in India, there's this community called uh, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Cell. And each college has a unit which helps people to become entrepreneurs. So these were the two choices that I made when I was in college. And ever since that, all the logos that you see below are companies that I've worked for in different capacities. Now, how do I get to work there? They don't come to my house, knock my door and say, hey, listen, Aisha, we have a job for you. I've gone out, figured out that these are the things that I want to do. This is what excites me. I need to apply here. I need to apply there. I apply. I write cover letters about what I can contribute to their team. And if they find it good, then I just get there. So the process has to be in a way that you do not confine yourself, right? Like you be part of, a, you, you explore something new about you, everything. Like, you know, be it you having a vocational skill, you can be a good dancer, you can be a good singer, you can be somebody who likes to travel. Like, and when I say travel, most people think that going abroad is traveling. No, going abroad is not traveling. In the city, in, in the same village or the city that you live in, within the proximity of 20 kilometers, there would be places where you can watch a good sunrise. There would be places where you can watch a good sunset. Even finding those places and going there is also travel. And when you do things outside your comfort zone, right, that's when you really make a lot of sense to yourself. You'll start feeling like there's more to you. There's more to you than you just sitting home or there's more to you than just talking to your friends, right? So, like, I mostly end my talk by telling this to everybody that those who can, they just do. And those who can do more, they just go one step ahead and they just volunteer. So, like, you know, this is something which is very universal, right? And it's pretty much like that. Imagine if this whole event, this whole webinar was happening offline. And if I was in your college uh, doing this talk in a hall, and let's say somebody brings a carton of water bottles, how many of the students in the audience would, you know, voluntarily get up to take that carton of box and then say, okay, listen, I will distribute it. Very few people do that, right? So it's also our willingness to do things. That's why I said those who can, they can do, but those who can do more are the ones who actually stand up and say, okay, listen, I will distribute the bottles. So I think that's all from my end. Uh, this is no education that I've done here now. I was just passing information that I felt has helped me in the past six to seven years. And uh, these weren't things that I was told when I was in college, or these weren't the things that I at least thought of when I was in college. So considering that you guys are all a part of an engineering college, part of IEEE as a society and an, an association, uh, it'll be great for you guys to know this. And I would be really happy if any of you have any questions and uh, I can answer a few of them. Uh, if not, if you don't want to ask questions on the platform, then you can uh, contact me in any of my social media platforms. And, uh, you know, I can answer your questions there. I might take, say, a day or a two to respond to you. Uh, but then, you know, you can ask any questions regarding career or regarding even IEEE or anything associated to your engineering degree and your, you know, options ahead and how to do courses online. Whatever you feel like you want to ask a question, you want to say something about the webinar today, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, any of the platforms, whichever you're comfortable 
at so yeah i can put my linkedin url here even my website uh, i'll just put my website so that you get all the information there itself so it was nice talking to all of you i am open to few questions if at all somebody has otherwise i am good arik over to you Thank you, Ashana Jia, for your enlightening speech. Uh, we are really impressed having a great session. I think the participants uh, have learned a lot, and they will be benefited very much through the webinar. Any more questions? Um, I can see a question from Marshall Ashif. He is asking about how to unlearn anything, right? So unlearning is a very difficult process, I must tell you, because learning or taking something is easier, right? Like say, if you want to make friends, making friends is easier. But let's say something happens between the two of you, and you want to detach that friend out, that's a very difficult process. So unlearning is something that has to go like in a stepwise manner. where let's say uh, i'll tell you something like uh, i was born into a very conservative muslim family and uh, accordingly like you know my family wasn't very okay for me to go out and study or at least do mechanical engineering or things like that that's because i've gone through certain kind of social conditioning about okay this is how it is this is how you know uh, women are not supposed to go out and study or this is how it is or you know things like that now how do i unlearn it it is when i learn something new which overrides the thing that i've learned before so unlearning doesn't happen just because you want to unlearn something you unlearn when you hear about something or when you know about something that uh, you know overlaps with something that you existingly know let's say a lot of us we weren't born knowing feminism right like i haven't even heard that word when i was in school it's something that came out recently but when i read about it if i feel that it makes some sense then i'm unlearning certain things in my head or let's say if i uh, it's more like imagine your brain to be like a uh, what, what do i say like a hard disk so you have so much of information so the more and more information that you get if anything is can be replaceable right like you know how we replace files of the same names on our laptops similarly if you find anything that can be replaceable then you just replace that and you instead put this because otherwise you know just like a hard disk your brain has a particular threshold of how much it can store so it's important that when you learn something new you immediately replace it with something that you think that doesn't make sense anymore because you have learned the right way of it or you have learned a way which makes more sense to you so uh, so yeah so i think that's how we unlearn and it's a very slow process you might find it very tiring initially but as you keep going as you have more experiences in life as you mingle with more people you have more exposure it just gets easier dear participants please turn on your camera we can take a photo together now please everyone turn on your camera done yes done thank you now i request shaun to present the honor of appreciation to the speaker shaun Yes, just a short minute. Do you see my screen? Yes.
ओके थैंक यू now i would like to request saida noshid ibnat apu i triple cs bbt student branch chapter to shares her perceptions about today's event saida noshid ibnat apu are you here Okay, now I would like to request uh, Raki, chair of I T P U L R S B B T Student Branch Chapter, to share her to share his perceptions about today's event. Okay, I'm a question about that, Ramon. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ramon. Hello, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Myself, Raki Hasan, vice chair person, I T P U L B B T Student Branch. Well, at first, I would like to thank our guest Aisha Nazia. We are really appreciate the time you took for sharing with us your knowledge about focusing on profession, passion, and people. In this new era of civilization, this webinar has made it easier for all of us to begin our journey in professional field. It was such an amazing and interactive session where many of our mysterious area clarified. We learned a lot and benefited from you today. I would also like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Anwar sir, uh, respected chairman sir, the, uh, Department of Tripoli for being uh, our backbone throughout this process. This webinar wouldn't have been possible without the constant effort and support from our student branch counselor, advisor, and mentor, and obviously our branch chairperson. So I hereby extend my gratitude towards them too. Last but not the least. This session got its life from the participants and the volunteers. This wouldn't have been success without you all. So once again, I thank each and everyone who are present here for giving their support and cooperation and for making it happen successfully. We are willing to do more of these types of program in future. By the way, you the people can express your opinion on comment box uh, about how was today's event and. what kind of program you uh, you want from us in future inshallah we will try our best to arrange such a program according to your opinion thank you very much everyone for joining with us today take care stay home stay safe thank you rakim bhai for your valuable speech dear listeners thank you once again to all the honorable guests faculty members and students for your cooperations that is a must for all time it has been a pleasure being with all of you today and again thank you all for your patience i wish you a very good evening stay safe and stay well and this is the ending moment of today's session thank you everyone thank you tarik thank you the organizing committee and thanks to everybody who listened uh, i really hope that uh, you enjoyed the one hour and at least you got something to take home uh, so i'll see you on the other side of the world thank you and bye thank you thank you thank you apu